Northern California. You're watching Action News Now. Breaking news. Much of the city of Chico is underwater tonight. A slow-moving thunderstorm stalled over the area, dumping many inches of rain in a matter of a few hours, prompting a flash flood warning. It's turned so many streets, including the Esplanade, into rivers tonight. This is the Esplanade near First Avenue a couple hours ago. Now, there are reports of cars stranded in floodwaters from Pillsbury Road to Hicks Lane to Warner Street. We have a lot of breaking news for you tonight, including a fatal officer-involved shooting in Redding. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But first, more of the severe weather from heavy rain to flash flood warning to hail. We'll get to Haley Watts in just a minute, but take a look at this video from Hicks Lane, just north of Eaton Road. This is the far north end of Chico. This is one of the first areas hit hard by the pounding rain tonight. You can see there's actually several feet of water in the roadway. Flooding actually made its way right up to homes, but no indoor flooding that we're aware of. And if you weren't out in it yourself tonight, this is what it looked like around 7 p.m. This is a gas station at the corner of Eaton Road and the Esplanade as the heavy rain was practically falling sideways. The wind was gusting at about 20 miles an hour at times tonight. The good news is, thankfully, the extreme weather has subsided at this hour, 11.01 p.m. The flash flood warning expired one hour ago. Let's get over to Haley Watts. She's in the Storm Tracker Center. Haley. Yeah, Alan, let's kind of zero in on what's going on right now, and then I'll give you a look at what's happened over the past couple of hours. So here's where our storm's at right now. So this is uh, kind of the southern part of Butte County. It's moving off uh, toward, more towards Quincy than anything else. So you can see Chico really largely unaffected at this time. Now taking a look at how much rain we're still seeing, up to about a, maybe a third of an inch an hour, and that's in the heaviest areas. Other areas like towards maybe Forest Ranch, seeing just maybe about a tenth to a quarter of an inch inch an hour so calm down quite a bit but in the past few hours here's from just from 820 we were seeing that flash flooding all across areas of Chico uh, highway 99 several lanes underwater and just city roads all over the place Hamilton City saw about three inches of rain this evening and we had thunderstorm wind damage uh, to, to the trees along the Sacramento River so if that's your route tomorrow morning keep in mind it could be out there a couple inches of hail especially in the area around Meridian Road knocking cars off of the road and uh, Shasta County not immune to this storm system either um, basically some areas of Anderson just in the past hour or so still reporting areas of flooding so taking a look at the next couple hours ahead well mostly clear out there but we're not quite done with this weather yet uh, coming up in a bit I'll check in and we'll take a look at tomorrow and the rest of our week Thank you so much, Haley. Right now in the heart of North Chico, near Tinseltown Theater, Pillsbury Road has been under water for much of the night, stranding some drivers in the middle of the road. And that's where we find Action News Now reporter Laura Eng with the very latest tonight. Laura? Alan, I've been here for several hours now by Pillsbury and Eaton Road. As you can see right now, the road, it is completely clear of any flooding. If I hadn't been here just a few hours ago, I know it would be hard to believe, but take a look at this video that I shot earlier. It does show a car being towed away. It's one of seven trucks that was stuck in the water tonight at this particular intersection. It was a story of teamwork, a story of community. What I mean by that, several people who were stuck in the water, they called their friends for help, and when they managed to get their car that was stuck out of the water. I was told they decided to stick around here and help other people out who were stuck here. And so it was all about people who didn't work necessarily for the city working here, making sure other people were out of the flooding. I did speak with a public works manager from the city of Chico earlier, and I asked him, was this too much rain too fast? I also spoke with a person who lives near this area, and they shared with me what they thought about the flooding. I've lived here for 10 years, and... Um this flooding is not normal for for this area or or for all of chico i i i would imagine uh, certainly too much rain too fast so we had a lot of flooding in locations where we don't usually see flooding at all um so that's an indication that it was just simply too much rain all at once uh but there's of course some storm drains that we've been able to unplug as well which means they were plugged 
As you can see in the distance behind me over here, that is Public Works over there. And like we just heard Skylar Lipsky, he's in charge of Public Works in Chico. He told me that there's a lot of flooding over here in parts that typically his department doesn't see. And he said he does attribute that again to too much rain coming into areas just way too fast. As you can see by those flashing lights over there in the distance, that is Public Works continuing to work on clearing some of the drainage that is clogged over there. I asked him, did you have to use any of the heavy equipment, any sort of giant vacuums, things like that. He said, no, that wasn't needed. It was pretty easy, pretty quick to clear the drainage. As you can see here, I've been reporting at this intersection for the past two hours now, and the roads, they are completely clear. Like I said, you almost wouldn't be able to believe that just about an hour ago, we were seeing about half a foot to a foot of flooding coming up nearly to my knees. But Public Works has done a fantastic job in clearing this, and as you can see, cars are able to drive safely through this intersection. I will continue to remain here, keep you up to date on the latest information at this intersection by Pillsbury and Eaton Road. But for now, reporting live in Chico, Laura Ang, Action News Now. Thank you, Laura. Now this is flooding near downtown Chico. This building is at West 9th and Orange Street earlier this evening. There are actually people who were trapped in the upper floor. The flood water is so high, they, they couldn't even open the ground level door. So they were waiting it out until the water subsided right there. East Avenue is also the scene of major flooding tonight. In fact, this is a two-car crash tonight that slowed traffic on the Esplanade at East. This video was taken about 8 p.m. Chico police worked to clear the scene and direct traffic in all directions. No word on any injuries here. Flood water pooled into the Java Detour and Rayleigh's and Carl's Jr. parking lots and turned the roads and the intersection into a river of water all along East Avenue from Highway 99 to Highway 32. Cars struggled to make it through, submerged in some areas. And just down the road, flooding happened so quickly on East Avenue that employees at Chuck Patterson Toyota had to swing into action moving cars on the lot because of the flooding. Then the employees kept waiting for the chance just to get out and make their way home tonight as the rain kept coming, kept pounding. Well, a neighborhood on DeGarmo Drive and Pence Road also dealt with the effects of the heavy rain tonight. Take a look at this video. You can see cars ripping through the water on the road. Water was even high enough to create a small whirlpool that you'll see right there in a moment. Our neighbors were shocked by the strength of the storm. And then check this out. That pile of white stuff there, that's hail that the storm dumped tonight in parts of Chico. This is West 15th and Salem, just off Broadway. Now, there's no flooding when we got there, but just a couple of piles of hail. It's another big story to tell you about tonight. One killed in an officer-involved shooting in Redding. Coming up, we'll tell you what led to that deadly confrontation this afternoon. And the Oroville Spillway, it is open for business just in time for spring wet and runoff. You'll see more from the $1 billion project. A deadly police shooting is under investigation tonight in Redding. Action is now reporter Spencer Joseph tells us what happened after police got reports of a suspicious man. 321, shots fired. 321, copy, shots fired. Those were the initial dispatch calls Tuesday afternoon when an officer-involved shooting left one man dead. Officers initially responded because people in the area say the man was acting very strangely. Uh, saying that there was a person acting very suspicious uh, in this area, this residential area near the McConnell Foundation. Uh, that was potentially watching children and acting bizarre. Um, one of the people that called said that this person had a firearm uh, in his waistband. Police say that man started behind me on the corner of Hemingway and Shasta View. Officers say the man made his way down Hemingway, and that's where several people called to report suspicious activity, even saying at one point he was watching children. He made his way all the way past where these police cars now sit. The person was semi-cooperative, but then became very uncooperative. Uh, during a struggle, uh, one of the uh, patrol officers from the Reading Police Department fired uh, several shots. The uh, suspect ultimately was uh, pronounced deceased at the scene. Homeowners in the area are extremely concerned that this would happen on their street. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, not at all. You know, really, we have a nice neighborhood. Oh, now and then we have a few people that come through and, and steal some things, but nothing of this magnitude at all. 
During the struggle, police say no officers or bystanders were hurt, but people living in this community are still shaken from the experience. That's not what you want in your neighborhood. You know, that type of person, that situation with a handgun, uh, I think guns are important, but I think they need to be in the hands of the right type people, you know, so um, sorry for the situation for sure. And it unnerves everybody. Spencer Joseph, Action News Now. The Oroville Dam spillway was in use today for the first time in nearly two years. The DWR said that the spillway has been restored to full functionality. Repairs, you may recall, surpassed $1 billion. So releases today from the spillway reached 8,300 cubic feet per second. The department may increase those flows into the Feather River, Feather River later this week as much as 60,000 CFS. Now, we spoke to people who came out today to watch I think they've done a good job I mean they've had the you know the engineers on it and the, you know I mean they're under the microscope so they it's gonna be done right and I think it's, it's working well so I don't think people need to be scared <laughs> I think it's pretty cool that they're letting it out and it is working uh, the emergency spillway is not being used because that only goes over when the um, when the lake is full but I think it's good that it works, but if you look at the sides, it looks like the sides of the spillway are like playing cards. That's kind of weird to see that, that if it'll, it seems to be with, withholding the water, so that's good. The last time the spillway was used, nearly 200,000 people had to be evacuated across Northern California. And you may remember, in early February 2017, this is what it looked like. The dam's half-century-old spillway broke apart as it carried heavy flows from the storms. That year, heavy snow in the mountains doubled the region's snowpack in one week. State reservoirs were full after years of drought. Then on Tuesday, February 7th, huge chunks of concrete broke away from the spillway. On Sunday, February 12th, the threat of catastrophe became real when a large hole developed below the emergency spillway. And no one knew if the hillside or the emergency spillway would simply cave in. Butte County Sheriff Corey Honey then issued a mandatory evacuation that sent 188,000 people from their homes. Everyone had one hour to get out. And now, Action News Now Storm Tracker weather. Coverage you can count on. Let's check in with Haley again. And you were talking about the amount of rain that came down tonight. It was, we see heavy downpours, but it just kept coming oh, tonight. Yeah. So. Several inches at least, Yeah, it right? seemed unbelievable. Some areas were reports of up to five inches over wow. that time span mm -hmm. uh, when that storm cell just swept through Hamilton City, bit of about three inches. But we're looking pretty close to all clear now, which is good news. Good, yeah. Uh, we're still going to keep this flood warning in effect. So the flash flood warning has expired as of 10 o'clock tonight for but this area of Butte County. Still keep in mind that through tomorrow morning mm -hmm. at about 8.30, Plan on those roads being flooded still. We're seeing the water go down. You saw Laura Ang out there on Pillsbury, and uh, the water levels have dropped substantially. But into the morning, especially if you get up early before the sun comes up, keep in mind that it could be still pretty deep out there in certain areas. All right, we're going to take a look at where the storm is moving right now. So moving uh, to the north and northeast, so headed maybe toward the Quincy area, looking like we could get some rain in Quincy pretty soon. Uh, but much lighter. Uh, we're seeing just about in the strongest parts, say north of the Feather Falls area. Right around here, we're seeing maybe about a third of an inch of, a rain, of rain over toward Forest Ranch, maybe a tenth to maybe a quarter of an inch at the most. Now, as for what we saw over the last couple of hours, this reported just around 8.30, flooding on the southbound lanes of Highway 99 all across really the city of Chico, uh, flooding in the Nord area, so homes uh, west of Eaton, about a foot and a half of water in, in driveways in those homes over there. Hamilton City, as I said, three inches of rain as that storm moved through. We're seeing uh, thunderstorm wind damage to trees. Uh, right around the Sacramento River area, trees knocked down. So that's another thing to keep an eye out for tomorrow morning when you're heading off to work, especially if it's dark out there. We could see some downed limbs uh, into some of the roadways. Hail was a huge issue. We saw up, piling up to two inches high in some in areas, up to maybe three quarters of an inch in diameter. That threw some cars off the road over by Meridian and Highway 32 as well. And Shasta County also had some 
flooding issues we saw in Anderson just in the past hour or so. Um, areas of Anderson off Highway Interstate um, Highway 5 uh, still dealing with issues of flooding in some areas. So the good news is looking like it's mostly clear, just some scattered showers throughout the night tonight. And as we move into the day tomorrow, it's not looking too substantial. We're seeing maybe oh, about a tenth of an inch in rain as we go through our day Wednesday. Here's 8 p.m. and we're looking at less than a tenth of an inch of rain in Chico, maybe a bit more in the Red Bluff area. So watching this next storm that's moving through because we're not done yet. Unfortunately, we don't have a sunny weekend ahead. So this is for your Thursday scattered showers. Uh, and picking up really on Friday, you're going to see this nice band of moisture coming through. And this is one that we'll keep an eye on because we're seeing uh, lower snow levels with this. We're seeing heavy rain yet again. And this is not scattered showers like what we saw today. This is pretty continuous rainfall across Northern California for your Friday afternoon and into your Saturday morning, waking up to more rain on and off throughout the weekend. Sunday looking like we could see some showers as well, but you might see some sunshine as well for your Sunday. And then another storm system moves through on Monday as well, clearing up for your Tuesday. So for Friday, we're keeping in mind that snow levels will start to lower right now. We're at 6,500 to 7,000 feet is pretty much as low as we're going to see snow. It's not that terribly cold out there right now. We'll see those levels start to drop though. Couple inches, uh, maybe up to four inches at the higher elevations on Thursday. But then on Friday, we see up to two feet at 6,000 feet. So if you have any plans for this weekend ahead to the mountains, you may want to reconsider, especially if you don't have four wheel drive on your vehicle. Uh, be very careful out there on the roadways. Uh, look at your day tomorrow quickly. Uh, Trinity, Siskiy region warming up to the 50s. And what we're seeing here is just that chance for showers in the mornings. Uh, we're not looking at heavy rainfall for your Wednesday. Across the foothills warming up to the 50s. North Valley 50s warming up to the 60s. And we'll see the same in the Mid Valley. Uh, could be pretty gusty out there, but we're not planning on a huge chance for any rain. Here's a quick look at your seven day forecast where the weekend's always in view and we're seeing 50s and 60s. 50s for your low, 60s for your highs. So across the valley, really Friday is what we're keeping an eye out for in terms of how much rain we're going to get. Mostly looking at Friday afternoon uh, for more dangerous conditions, if you will, in terms of rain and snowfall in the mountains. But maybe as we get into the weekend, we'll clear out again. All right. Thanks a lot, Haley. Busy night, right? Well, uh, we'll be right back. Check in with Laura Ang again right after this. Well, welcome back. We had reporters driving all around Chico this evening to get the very latest on the flooding, and that included abandoned cars. It's been a crazy evening out there, and Laura Ang went over to Pillsbury Road in Chico, where, uh, if you're not familiar with the area, that's where Tinseltown is, for example. So it's right in the heart of North Chico. Crazy flooding earlier this evening, a very different scene now. So let's go to Laura Ang for an update on what's going on. Laura? And at this point, as you can see behind me over here, take a look at the flooding. It's completely gone right now. Today, it was all a story of teamwork and community, like I've been saying for the past few hours here during my live shots. Several people we could cut to some video now that we shot earlier as you could see there were some cars that were stuck in the water about seven of them I was told by witnesses and all of the people who were stuck here they were helped out by other people this wasn't a story necessarily of the city coming in this was a story of people helping people and as you can see right now around me over here like I mentioned the flooding is pretty much gone at this point I spoke with public works earlier and I asked what is next for you now that the flooding is all clear and they said that day two tomorrow it will be all about mopping up making sure that all of the drainages are still clear and ensuring that there isn't any other flooding that they need to worry about in this area but as you can see by the roads around me here this area is mostly clear it's pretty hard to believe considering just an hour ago we were standing in nearly half a foot of flood water but this was all thanks to public works they're fast acting being able to clear the drainages in this area and throughout Chico too. We'll continue to keep you up to date on more information as the weather continues to change over here in the North State. But for now, reporting in Chico, Laura Ang, Action News Now. And uh, we'll be right back. Stay with us. We do have one local uh, sports story we want to share with you tonight. Chico State's Tyler Arroyo is heading back to the NCAA championship and also earned Conference Athlete of the Week for the fourth time in his career. Arroyo is one of the top collegiate high jumpers in the nation and a favorite to win it all in the 2019 
in 2019, I should say. Well, he finished third at last season's championship, but he's looking to win big this time around. The senior cleared 2.17 meters, which is about 7 feet 2 inches, in last Saturday's Invitational at Stanford. It earned him an automatic bid to, bid to the championships. The high jump is an event where you basically just run at the bar, usually taking about 10 steps and try and jump as high as you can and clear a bar. It feels good to be able to keep contributing to the team and be able to improve in my event. Um, so I'm just glad that I'm able to keep uh, doing good. Now, local track and field fans can check out Arroyo and his teammates this Friday and Saturday as they host the Chico State Distance Carnival and Twilight Invitational Men's High Jump. The Invitational starts at 2 p.m. Friday, 10 a.m. Saturday. Admission is free. Well, it's been 17 months since the Tubbs fire devastated entire neighborhoods around Santa Rosa. Now the rebuilding has begun. And as reporter John Ramos shows us, some fire victims are choosing a construction method that promises to get them home sooner. Building a house can be mentally exhausting with a thousand decisions to make and timelines to juggle. Now imagine doing that while you're also trying to rebuild your life. Came right over the top, right over that ridge, all the way into town. When George Nostrant lost his home in the Tubbs fire, he knew he wanted to rebuild. But there was one thing at the top of his wish list. Not spending three or four years of my life building. So George turned to a company called Hybrid Prefab Homes in Santa Rosa. They customize pre-designed floor plans, build them in modules in a factory, and deliver them to the site. George's new 3,000 square foot home arrived in four pieces with cabinets and fixtures already installed. Finish work is almost complete and he expects to be in the home in just a few months. If you know what you want, and light or you know know what you had and want to re replicate it it makes it pretty easy the company's managing partner says besides costing about 20 percent less than traditional construction prefab houses offer something that appeals especially to traumatized fire victims the chance to put the disaster behind them quickly and get on with life most of them are actually living on their properties so every day they look outside and they see what's not there anymore and they're really really wanting to get back to to it, you know, whatever that home may be. George says of the 100 homes that burned in his area, only 30 are being rebuilt. The rest of the victims have left. But he's staying because he doesn't want to give up what's just beyond his back porch. I wish I had more live trees around, but uh, the view is still great, so we're happy. The builder says depending on design, prefab homes average about 8 to 14 months to build compared with two years in the traditional method. In Sonoma County, John Ramos, KPIX 5. There's another reason why speed is important. Many fire victims are facing a two-year time limit for insurance claims to be paid. Up next, we'll check in with Haley Watts once again for one final look at our forecast on this very wet and windy flooding night. Let's get one last check of the forecast before we say goodnight. Uh, Haley uh, is here once again, and uh, hopefully tomorrow is not going to be quite like today. It's not looking like it, that's for sure. Now, we do have, as we go into our day tomorrow, we do still have a flood a warning through areas of Butte County. So everywhere where that fl those floodwaters really rose high today, uh, keep in mind they're probably not going to completely recede, uh, especially as you're heading off to work tomorrow. So be careful out there. This is that storm system now, so you're seeing it moving toward the northeast, kind of toward the Quincy area, but we're not completely done with the rain yet. We're still seeing scattered showers just east of Orland and through the Chico area, at, but very slow rays, less than tenth of an inch there. The strongest part of this storm really is just about a third of an inch that's north of the Feather Falls area. And behind it, not a whole lot. So throughout the night, just a chance for those continued scattered showers. But moving in the day tomorrow, we're looking at uh, yeah, Wednesday should be the driest day this week. Rain starts to pick up again, though, as we get on Friday. We're going to really have to keep an eye on it. It's supposed to really pick up, especially into the afternoon, and we'll see snow levels drop up to a couple of feet of snow. 
and then we're moving into our weekend. I've just never seen anything like it. I've been yeah. I've been here for almost 20 years. Oh wow! And yeah. and so just so widespread as it came so quickly tonight. Yeah. The flooding was just something incredible. The last yeah. couple of hours. Hey, well, real quick. Today is a day to celebrate a classic sandwich combination. It is or was National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day, according to NationalDayCalendar.com. The average American eats more than 2,000 PB and J sandwiches by the time they graduate from high school. In the early 1900s, peanut butter was considered high class and could only be found in the finest New York City tea rooms. Yeah. I love peanut butter and jelly. They're so good, still. Thanks for joining us, Sage Ride. Have a good night. <laughs> Thanks for watching.